Hi, this is I think the final video in the playlist where we've been looking at the foundation tier and it's the sample assessment materials from Edexcel. If you follow the link below in the description you'll be able to download the paper and have a go at it for yourself. The whole idea of this is that you keep stopping and starting the video, um, try each of the questions then compare your solution. Okay, in the last video we stopped at question number 23, so we're going to start this video Video from question number 24 and question number 24 deals with a topic which is called Sokatoa. Now Sokatoa is all about dealing with right angle triangles and it's basically the ratios that we use and we we say something like this so Sokatoa Toa. And what we're actually saying is that in a right angle triangle you've got different sides. This happens to be the opposite because it's opposite the angle we're talking about. This is the longest side which is the hypotenuse and then this is the side here which is the adjacent. Okay so with this particular one I need to work out the value of this angle. Now I know the opposite and I know the hypotenuse so I'm going to use this ratio here. And what I'm going to say is that the sine of x equals the opposite which we now know is 5 divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, so if I just plug that in for a moment, what I'm going to get is it equals 5 over 14. Okay, so the problem with that is that actually what I'm going to get when I work that out on my calculator is actually the sine. Well, I don't want the sine. What I actually want is the angle. So I use something called inverse trig. And if you have a look on your calculator, then you'll see above the sine key, um, you should be able to access it by pressing something like function or shift or something like that. And you'll see this little sign. It's a sign to the minus one. And that basically means the inverse trigonometry. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to plug in this 5 over 14. And if we do that, the calculator will then work out the value of the angle. And what you'll get is 20.924. 832. Okay, and that's actually the answer. The only thing is you need to make sure it's correct to one decimal place. So if we look at the first decimal place, it's nine. I'm not going to change that because the one after is only a two. So I'm going to leave this as 20.9 degrees. Okay, hope that's all right with you. Let's move on then to question number 25. And in question number 25, we're dealing with an arithmetic sequence. This is something that does come up um, a fair bit in these sorts of papers. Okay, and what it allows you to do is to um, work out the value of places within this particular sequence. Okay, so what we've got then is uh, numbers 6, 10, 14, and 18. And what you'll see there is that they have a common difference, something called a common difference of 4. Okay, and what you need in order to write down something called the nth term of this sequence is two things. The first thing is the common difference, okay, which we've said is 4 which equals four, okay? The other thing we need is something called the zero term. So it's basically where the sequence starts from. Now this is actually, term is just a word that means place really. So this is the first place, second place, third place, and fourth place. Well, the first place is gonna be the, uh, so this is the first place, the zero place is gonna be the one below that, which is actually two, okay? So the zero term or the zero place is gonna be two. And the way we write that is nth term equals 4n plus 2. Okay, I uh, hope that's all right for you. Um, if you've got any problems with these sorts of questions or you've not come across this before, please do have a look at some of the playlists on the channel and that'll give you quite a lot of examples or you can go to 3 Minute Maths and download and have a look at some of the posts on there. Okay, um, the part B of this is it says the nth term of a different arithmetic sequence is 3n plus 5. 
is 108 a term in the sequence? So basically, you remember that I mentioned to you that the n bit of it is actually the place. So this is the um, zero place, the first place, second place, third place. So what we're actually saying is, is there a place for 108 within this sequence? So what we can do is say, well, 108 equals 3n plus 5. And if n is a whole number, it tells us that there definitely is a place. So let's just work that out. So if I minus 5 from both sides, what I get is 103 equals 3n. And then if I divide by 3, well, actually, I don't get a whole number. 103 divided by 3 is not a whole number where n equals a whole number. So in other words, there's no place for it. There's no term that contains the number 108. OK, and again, there are examples of this on the playlist uh, on the, uh, the channel if you want to have a look at that. OK, so in this particular case, therefore, 108 is not in the sequence. OK. Alrighty. I do appreciate at this time, at this end of the paper, the questions are getting a little bit trickier. Um, they are a little bit more challenging, but bear in mind that um, the foundation level now goes up to level five. So actually, if you can work within these questions, you're still going to get an extremely good GCSE result. OK, so let's move on then to question number 26. And question number 26 fairly standard actually is those kind of questions that deal with speed distance and time okay and I've spotted here that it is all about speed so before I read the rest of the question I'm just going to write down the formula for speed which equals distance divided by time okay now basically what they're asking us to do is to work out the speed that this is driving at, okay, that, that they're driving out of that, and basically gauge whether it's faster or slower than 70 miles an hour. The important thing with this is this bit, 70 miles per hour, because we need to make sure that whatever we work out here is, is in the terms of miles per hour. OK, well, miles is all right, because it's going to be 30 miles, because that's what it tells us. However, the difficulty we've got here is 26 minutes is not an hour. What we need to do is remember that it's 26 out of 60 minutes, OK? And that will give you the hourly rate, OK? And this is the most important thing with this. Now, if you do that, then, and put it into your calculator, you'll work out the answers to this particular question. Now you can, if you prefer, work that out first and what that will give you is 30 divided by 0.43 recurring and that's absolutely fine, that's 0.433333 so on. It's absolutely fine if you do that, however you will get an answer around about 69.230769 and actually that bit of it is also recurring. But the important thing about it is that this is kilometres per hour and you're also demonstrating that um, Lefner isn't right, she's not right, OK? You just basically need to drive at slightly less than the speed limit, OK? All right, hope that's OK for you. Just remember, with these types of questions, make sure that you get this as a portion of an hour, OK? Because we're looking at there. Oh, I beg your pardon, I've just spotted this is actually miles per hour. I do apologise. OK, so that's miles per hour. OK, hope that's all right. Let's move on then to question number 27. And in question number 27... Um, again, relatively popular type questions, and it's kind of important that you, uh, you get to grips with these sorts of questions. And basically what we're looking at is working out a couple of things. The first one is something called the modal class interval. Well, modal is just a fancy maths word for saying most. OK, so in other words, which of these classes, that's these things here, 
has the most number of adults in it. Okay, well, it's actually that one here because that's got 12 adults in it. So in this particular case, we're going to say the modal class is 22 less than f less than less than or equal to uh, 24 there. Okay, hope that's all right for you. So that's the modal class interval. It's a fairly straightforward one mark, providing you remember it. Okay. Then they've asked us to work out an estimate for the mean foot length. In other words, the average foot length. OK, well, what we're saying here is that um, we've got three adults that are between 16 and 18 centimetres. So the easiest way of doing this is say, well, we'll make them all average, which is 17, and we'll work out the total amount of centimetres for those three adults. Remember that mean or mean average is a total amount. OK, so let's have a look at that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little column here and in here I'm going to write 3 times 17 because that's my middle value, which happens to be 51. And then here I'm going to put 6 times 19, which again is my middle value, so that's going to give me 114. Then I'm going to write 10 times 21, which is equal to 210. Then it's going to be 12 times 23, which is 276, and 9 times 25, which is equal to 225. And what we do if we add all of those up, what we mean then is that this amount, 876, is the complete, if you put all the feet uh, toe to heel, <laughs> and you measured them, you're going to get 876 centimetres, OK? And that's going to be out of the 40 adults that it tells us. So I'm also going to check that that totals up to 40. And actually on my calculator, it does. So we've got 40 adults, all standing toe to heel. And the total length is 876 centimetres. OK, so the average then, the mean average, is the total length divided by the total adults. OK, so if I just plug that into my calculator, what I've got at the top is going to be 876. And at the bottom, I've got 40. OK, so the average length of all of those toe heels put together is going to be 21.9 centimetres. And that would be the answer to this particular question. OK, hope that's all right for you. Let's move on then to question number 28. And question number 28 um, is actually mainly, no, it is. In fact, it's all Pythagoras. OK, um, Pythagoras does come up from time to time now in these sorts of exams because uh, it's considered to be kind of a practical type subject. So you need to look really at this diagram as two separate triangles. So the first one is this first triangle, which is the top one. And uh, that's a right angle triangle. So that's great because we can use Pythagoras with right angles. Uh, this is 10. And this is 5. And it's going to help us to work out this value of x if we know this line along here, which is this value along here. Now, what we're saying then is that the square of the hypotenuse, which is this long length along here, is equal to that square plus that square added together. Now, some people say it's c squared equals a squared plus b squared or a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Whichever way you do it, that's fine. But if you're going to do some revision for this, you need to be looking for Pythagoras. OK, and if you look at Pythagoras theorem, that will give you some examples of how we put this together. So what we've got here is 10 squared equals 5 squared plus bd squared. This is b and this is d, as you can see from this diagram here. OK, so I need to work out the value of BD squared. OK, so what I'm going to say is this is 100. 
equals 25 plus BD squared. If I take 25 from each side, it means that BD squared equals 75. Okay, now remember that's BD squared. If I want to work out the value of BD, I just square root it. And if I put that into my calculator, I'm going to get some massive great long number, 8.66025 dot dot dot. And it goes on and on and on for a little bit. But basically what we've done is we've said that this here is 8.6 dot 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 dot. OK, I hope that's all right for you. Now, I'm going to use then the same idea when I'm working out this second triangle here, because... I can also say this is actually a right angle triangle where this is four. Uh, we've now worked out this is 8.66 dot 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 dot, okay? And this is B and this is D, and they actually want us to work out this value of X. All right. Well, if you imagine it just flips the other way around, it's still the hypotenuse. This is still the hypotenuse. So what we're saying is, is that X squared equals 8.66 dot 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 <laughs> squared plus 4 squared, okay? Right, well actually I know that this is 75, okay, because I did it there. I've just used this just to illustrate that this squared is actually 75, so I'm going to leave it at 75 there, and that's plus 16, okay? Pop those into a calculator and you get 91, okay? So in other words, x squared is 91. So if I want to work out the value of x, I'm just going to square root it and I get uh, 9.53939, okay? Now, again, always, always, always go back and check what they want you to do in terms of accuracy. It says give your answer correct two decimal places. It is a four mark question, and despite you doing all this work, you're still gonna lose a mark if you don't answer the question correct to DP. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my second decimal place, which is a three. I'm going to change that actually to a 4 because the one after is a 9, okay? And because this is above a 5, it means this will change to a 4. So to two decimal places, it should be 9.54 centimetres, and that would be the answer to this particular question. Okay, so let's move on then to the final question of this particular paper. I hope you've done well so far, and congratulations for sticking with the videos at this to this point. Okay, so uh, let's have a look then at question number 29, which is a fairly straightforward one actually that just deals with probability trees. Okay. Um, this, I think, is a new topic for the foundation level, but you need to just maybe practice this a little bit. And it says, work out the probability of winning both games. OK, well, if they win game A, the probability is 0 0.2. And if they win game B, the probability is 0 0.3. And the way we work this out is we just simply multiply across. So it's 0 0.2 times 0 0.3, and that's going to equal 0 0.06. Just be careful about this and how you've calculated this. Do please check it with the calculator and be aware that it is not 0 0.6, okay? It's not that, okay? So just be very careful when you calculate these sorts of things. So the probability of this particular person of winning both games is 0 0.06, and that would be sufficient to answer this particular uh, question. I hope that's okay. We're right at the very end. Now, the paper itself is scored out of 80 marks. I um, hope you've done well. If you uh, need any support or help, please don't hesitate to add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. Have a look on the channel. Um, if you search through the channel, there are videos on lots of the topics in here. Um, every success. Please do subscribe to the channel, and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.